Hey everyone, my name is Martin and today we're breaking down Double Fantasy by The Weeknd and Future. Produced by The Weeknd himself alongside Mike Dean and Metro Boomin, this song is quite heavy on the synths and I love that. I love it! So let's start off with the opening synth. We're going to be using the Jupiter 8 emulation by Arturia, specifically the different ways preset, playing the following top melody and chords. Back to the intro, to add movement to the opening synth, we're alternately hiding and revealing its bright top end by automating both the filler cutoff fader within Jupiter 8 and this filter knob within an instance of this free plugin called DJM Filter. And not only does this add movement, but it also creates space for our next element, the saxophone. <laughs> which is really called production choice by the original producers. Now, I've been using sample instruments for quite some time, and there is a few tricks I like to apply to make them sound as realistic as possible. First, I make sure every note has a different velocity level to avoid getting that fake computerized sound. Second, I try to make the timing sound natural and imperfect by not putting every note exactly on the grid. And third, which is more specific to this saxophone sound, I add these attack notes before some of these saxophone notes to humanize our sound even more. Our saxophone from Contact is then being layered with this direct wave sample from FLPAC's Legacy Instruments Orchestral, which is accessible for everyone who owns FL, which is great. And adding this layer adds some brightness and body to our overall saxophone sound. Importantly, linked to our saxophone mixer track is an automation clip to control the way the longer notes fade as these notes remain at the same volume level even after holding them for a longer time. Like, they just don't fade and that's why we need this automation clip. Then we definitely need a bass for the intro, for which we're using this saw bass made from scratch in Serum by simply leaving oscillators A and B on the default saw wavetables increasing their unison to 8 and 2 respectively, slightly adjusting the detune on both, then choosing FM from B on oscillator A and setting oscillator B's volume at 0, the effect of which we can clearly hear as we turn up this FM knob. After which we enable the sub and link all three oscillators to a low pass filter where we also add some drive. Now, after 16 bars of intro synth, saxophone and saw bass, we're finally being introduced to the lead melody of the song, which closely follows the weekend's vocal melody. For this sound, I'm using a unique duplicate of the same different ways preset that we used in the intro, the only difference being that we now automate its filter and resonance faders to adjust the brightness and timbre of the lead throughout. And I'm then adding an additional saw layer to this to add body and character, made also in Serum simply by enabling oscillator A, increasing the unison to 16, adjusting the detune, and using the phaser 12 filter setting. And we're then linking LFO 1 to our filter cutoff, which creates this bright dreamy effect. And then we're ready to layer it with our lead from the Jupiter 8. Now I'm also creating a manual delay effect, which I'm doing manually because I want control over what specific notes receive the delay effect, which are these short transitional notes within the lead melody. Mm -hmm. 
And then after another 20 bars of lead, saw bass and vocals, we reach the point where the first 808 is introduced. For which we're using this heavily distorted preset inside Sublab XL called Drilly, which indeed hits hard. Which is being replaced by the saw bass again after 8 bars, and that section leads us to the part where the beat comes in. And right before that happens, I made this little sweep from scratch with FL's native 3 x OSC, using the noise oscillators, automating the cutoff through Fruity Free Filter, and adding a reverb. Now for the beat, we got this clipped decap kick sample from Splice. We also got this 808 hi-hat that comes from FL's default drums folder and we're decreasing its length in the sample window to make the hat shorter and tighter. And third, we got this 808 snare from Splice, again being shortened to get a tighter sound. And accompanying the beat is the final element of this remake, which is the second 808, which is different from the one used in the intro, as the second one is a lot more deep and sub-heavy. Again, I'm using Sublab XL, this time the Analog Moog 808 preset, and I'm also applying this tonal low-end boost trick. So, using Pro-Q3, I'm tonally boosting the low-end through a narrow but significant boost, which is crucially being automated so that our EQ boosts the frequencies associated with the underlying bass notes. Meaning when the 808 plays an A, we're boosting at 55Hz, when it plays an E, we're boosting at 41Hz, and so on. And what this does is really just bring out the low end a bit more, but doing so in a controlled way by only boosting the frequencies we need. And that's it for this week's video. Be sure to check out the final result using the link that should be somewhere in this corner. And also don't forget to download the free project file, the stems and the MIDI files down below for your own enjoyment. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I'd encourage you to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next week.